How's everybody doing this morning? You're like, where's Pastor Mauricio? <laughs> Today, uh, he's uh, actually with some of our friends. They have a church, and uh, they asked my husband if he can cover their services. And it was um, not too long ago, so he said, well, I will cover their services. Would you cover our services? And I had to pray and fast and everything. No. And so, so I said, of course, of course, uh, of course I will. I don't know if I can do like you do, but... I said, we're going to do it. So I'm excited to be able to speak to you this morning. And I believe that the word of God is going to bless you. I believe that you're going to leave uh, these double doors into our patio because you're going to go to the patio. Uh, full of hope, full of faith, and knowing that God has your back. So I want us to already go to, into the word and I want us to open uh, Psalms 23. We're going to park ourselves in Psalms 23. So that means you're going to stay there for a while. So follow me. Who comes on a Wednesday night? Thank you for the three of you. Uh, <laughs> that's when I speak. So let me, let me give you a little bit of background about me. Um, I go everywhere when I preach. My husband says that I'm a shotgun. I go everywhere. But at the end, I'll bring you back, okay? So don't be afraid of going on my rabbit trails. You're more than welcome to follow me and then come back. God is going to lead us into a good place. But one of the things that I have to say, uh, I was preaching this past Wednesday. One of the things that I was telling uh, the Wednesday crowd is that the more you read, the more you know the word of God, the more you go through things in life, the more you not only understand who you are, but you understand who our God is, the more stronger you get in life. I was telling her Wednesday night that one of, one of the scriptures that I have read, I, I don't know how many times, I don't want to say a thousand times because I'd be lying, but many times, is, it's, it's in Zechariah, I can't recall uh, where it is exactly, so you need to read all Zechariah. But it says that, it says, return to your stronghold, you prisoners of hope, because today I will give you a double portion. So when you read the word of God, and he says, he says who you are. He says, return to your stronghold. And it's not talking about our strongholds when we got up with our own issues. It's talking about that he is our only stronghold that we're supposed to have, which is Jesus Christ. And that we're forever, forever prisoners of hope. I don't know about you, but I felt many times in my 22, almost 22 years of Christianity, of walking with God, walking with Jesus, Many times I felt like I was alone. Many times I felt like he left me. Have you ever felt like he, 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 you're so sure because of the feelings, right, of the emotions? You, we feel like he left us. He's actually not speaking to us. And, and then we feel like uh, you're never going to come out of something. But I'm here to tell you that there's always good news. That's why it's called the gospel of good news. So let's go to, I know I already told you to go to um, Psalms 23, but I want to start with James first. James 1 to 3 says, consider it nothing but joy, my brothers and sisters. Whenever you fall into various trials, be assured that the testing of your faith through what? So it's not something that theological, not something that you think, no, it's something that you will go through because that's an experience. Produces endurance, leading to spiritual maturity and inner peace. I believe that we're living in times that we as a church, the body of Christ, not just this church, everywhere, we need endurance. Because we don't like, we don't like pain. I don't know about you, but I don't like pain. I don't like trials and I don't like tribulations. And I'm yet to tell you, and I'm going to be honest with you, is just consider it nothing but joy. When you fall into various, it's not even one problem. It's a plethora of trials. It's one after the other after the other, because that's what it seems to mean, into various trials, into various problems, into various situations, into a crisis. That The moment, the first time that you know that you're into a problem or you just fell into a problem, per se, you're like, you start doing dance, you know, like, oh, my gosh, I'm in trouble how many times have you done that? Be honest. I'm yet to do that. Good for you. One person. Do I get to that place? Yes. But my first 
human instinct is like, this sucks. Here we go again. But it says, count it all joy. Count it all joy. It means consider it a privilege. Consider it. This is a, it's it actually a time where you're going to have the best time because in that time is where we grow. Because it's only through faith that we grow. And, you know, growing up, um, I'm going to talk about my uh, Christian life. But when I remember, like, in my, in my walk, in my, be, in my beginning of walking with Jesus, you know, you... You know, you, you have, um, there is, we have a lot of lingo, you know, there's a Christian lingo, right? You know, you know the Christian lingo? Give me one. Not too many at the same time, please. <laughs> you guys are like, so, <laughs> one lingo. Okay, that's a good one. God is good. Anointed. Things that sometimes people don't get, how about that? We're, we're in the mountaintop, but like, what the heck, where are you? We were, we were born for mountaintops. Really? Well, that was me. I always wanted to live in the mountaintop, right? So I was confused, like mountaintop, like what's the mountaintop, the valley, and then we're all afraid of the desert, right? Like Jesus went to the desert. The Holy Spirit led him there. And so, but we're afraid of the valley. We're afraid of the desert. And then we love the mountaintop. But I remember, like, uh, in my beginning, like, you know, you're, you're, you're learning the word of God because you have to learn the word of God. Sometimes we are so caught up in, like, who am I? Who am I in, 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 in Christ? But you don't know who you are until you know who he is. And so I think sometimes we do everything backwards. Like, who am I? Who, who is it that am I? Where do I stand? Well, you won't know where you stand unless you know who your God is and who you're serving and who your Savior is. So anyways... So I, I, I'm going to tell you a few stories because I'm a storyteller. Not that I am, but I like, I like it. So you're here, so you're going to hear me. So I remember the first time I was talking to this person, and I was like, um, I said, I have, you know, I've been having this headache, and this, my headaches are like, and I was describing my headaches, right, because they're mine. And so I was like, my headache's here and my headache's there, and she, she went like this, you know, like, I'm not going to do it to you because I did it to my daughter. And she's like, she bit her finger index finger in my mouth like don't say that it's not your headache well whose is it then are you feeling it do you have it right now of course I didn't say that because I was very shy and I was very like oh my gosh so I was like don't talk to me don't get close to me you know I was a very sheltered and I was growing in the things of God right but now this woman has her index finger and I'm like ugh. I don't like it. I don't even like to share water with people, not even with my husband. So now you're putting your own finger where you pick your boogers and you put it in my mouth to correct my faith? No, not your headache, not your sickness, not your... So I was like super confused like this. So who is it then? Who's feeling all this? Because faith is not denying See, we think that faith is denying the facts. No, faith is not denying the facts. Faith is denying that our God, if, we're, if we look at it that way, it's like, okay, then it's not yours. So then why will God intervene on your behalf? It's not your, your headache. It's not your sickness. But one thing that it is is that we recognize the facts that we're going through, but the truth of God can override every fact. But we have to say what's going on, Right? And so I was very confused, like, oh, whose headache is this? And I was like, okay, take the headaches, with headaches. And, and I remember being very confused. But see, that's what we always tell you. You need to abide in the word of God. You need to know what the word of God says. What is faith? Is faith is calling those things that are not as though they are, but faith is confronting and facing the things and the trials and the tribulations and facing and facing it face forward and saying, you know what? I, yes, I am going through this. And yes, God healed me of migraine headaches because I said, God, take this migraine headaches that I am having. You're not having them, but I am. And I need healing. But I remember that we can get into all of those things, right? Like, let me do this. Because I know you. I'm on a pincher. Did it hurt you? It hurt you, right? No, it didn't hurt you. Shh, don't say that. It didn't hurt you. That, that's how stupid it is. Yeah, it did hurt her because I pinched her. Of course, it didn't hurt me because I'm the one who pinched her. 
But see, we have to understand what really faith is. It's calling those things that are not as though they are, but not denying that you're not going through issues. Because God cannot help you unless you confess. He says, even when he, we are in sin, he says, when you confess your sins, I forgive you. He already knows what you're doing, but he wants you to confess them, right? Are, we get, are you understanding all this? Okay. So one of the things that I always say for many years, I like, I want to go from glory to glory, from mountaintop to mountaintop. But I want my mountaintops to be like super fast. Like I like the idea of climbing a mountain, but I don't want to climb it. Do you see what I'm saying? I want to take the picture on the top, but I don't want to do the work. And I'm going to tell you a little story, So, and then we'll go to Psalms 23. But many years, my kids were little, our kids were little. Um, we were vacationing, I think we were in Hawaii. And have you heard of Diamond Head? Uh, it's, it's, uh, if, you, if you ever climbed it, it's, it's like, oh my gosh, really bad. <sighs> I'm already hyperventilating. <laughs> so my husband said, okay, Virginia, you really don't like to go for walks, so how about we're going to do the climb. We're going to climb, and I said, and we're going to take the, our kids because we cannot do it, you know, you know, when you're a mom and you're like, we need to take our kids because they need to the experience. It's like, well, yeah, but if we take the kids, we need to take the stroller. We need to take, uh, you know, di- we, need to, we, we need it, like, to carry a lot of things, right? I'm like, oh, we're taking the kids. And he said, okay, we should do it in the third day, so, you know, we do our walks, and by the time then, then you're a little bit, you know, you have a little bit of endurance. I'm like, oh, we're doing the walk today. We're going up the mountain. And so I got really cute, you know, because that's, that's how I like it. <laughs> you, like, you look, you look the part, right? I, like, oh, I was like, I got my, you know, my tennis shoes. They were really cute. And my outfit. And I even, I even, I even met my husband bought me one of those, like, backpacks that have the, you know, the ones that come with water. Ugh. And then I was like, it's been sitting there for, for, uh, for an hour. Now I was disgusted, you know, because that's the way I'm like, no, at that time, at that time, right? Now I'm better. But by the time that I'm going to climb, I, I'm disgusted about the water. And I'm like, okay, so it looks pretty fine. And people are coming back. And I see people pretty pale coming down. Like, it's okay, you know, I can do it. And, and he said, he said, are you sure you want to go up? And I was like, this is the last time. No, just kidding. <laughs> I was like, yes, of course. We came here. So why would I not? I want the experience. I want the pictures. I want to see the top. I want to see the valley. I want to see everything. Halfway through it, I wanted him to call the paramedics. <laughs> no, and I'm not kidding. To this day, he bothers me. And now he's going to hear it because then he finally stopped bothering me about that. Because I was like this. I, got, I think we need to call to call an ambulance it's like why I like I I can't breathe I can't breathe well he says well you know the higher we go the thinner the air gets so you're gonna have to adjust it so pace yourself and you know me I don't want to pace myself I want to be the first one on top but so now I'm like hyperventilating and I'm like okay getting pale and like quoting scripture like you know like that's gonna help me now right you have been walking years but now you want to go up so now by the time he's like, okay, we got to the halfway point, right? And now I can't even carry my son. I can't carry the back. I even made sandwiches. I wanted to throw him. It's too heavy for me. And I was like, babe, I'm going to sit here. You take the kids. It's like, we did this for you. I'm giving you the blessing. And he's like, no, you're coming with me, and we're going to do it, Virginia. You said you want to. Okay, and now he's strapping the kids, Isaac and Alexis. Well, Alexis was, of course, uh, bigger, but Isaac was, I think, about three. So he was tired already like me. I was like, Isaac is tired. He's like, no, we're going up. So now he's carrying a stroller, the backpack, the sandwiches, the kids, right? And said, okay, I'm going to go ahead. And then you get to a point that it's only like, I think it's 100 stairs or more. Oh, I don't know, maybe because I'm traumatized. It was like 100, and it's very narrow. It's only one person going up. It, one can be coming down, right? And so you, there is no time to stall on and up. You have to go up, right? So he's like, I'm going to go up with the kids. And I was like, you go and uh, I make it. So I start going, and at some point I was like, no, I'm going to die here. And now I'm like, literally, I'm telling you how I was thinking, I'm going to die, and then I'm going here, and... I wanted somebody to be upset at me and push me. It's there, like, you know, go up, go up. And I was like, I will go up one. And I was like, just, just go, go, go. And so by the time, like, I got there, it probably 
it probably, I don't know, I think it was more than 30 minutes, 45 minutes that it took me to go up. They were already taking pictures and did the entire thing. So I got up and I already feel like I'm dying. I'm going to die on the mountaintop. And I wanted to see it so bad, right? So I got there and it's like, now I can't even breathe. Because that air is fully, I don't even, there's no air here. So I got there like, I was like this, like disoriented, like where's my family? Like trying to look, I couldn't even find them. And then he sees me, babe, we're here. And they're all happy, right, the kids. And I was like, okay, we need a picture. I'm like, I don't have a time for a picture. <laughs> we need to go down. And he's like, but did you look at it? You need to go to that corner, that corner. I was like going insane. I had enough of the mountaintop. <laughs> and so we have a picture, which I'll bring next time on a Sunday. So we, he's like, but we need a picture. So they had to literally find uh, something where to like lean on because I was like, so I'm leaning on, and the, the, he's with the kids, and I'm like, I'm like this. <laughs> so that's our, that's our joke. It's a true story, but I was like, never again would I climb a mountain, even if they pay me, <laughs> unless I train, right? But the point is that we like the idea, right? Because if you do that every day, and guess what I found out? Once you go up, there's nothing up there. It's just, it's just, just there's not even flowers. There's nothing because nothing grows on the top. <laughs> Everything that it's the beauty is at the bottom. You just go there just to, for a moment to see the vision, right? So you want to live in vision, but the reality is in the valley, my friends. And so when I started with the Lord, I remember my mountaintop was that I fell in love and I'm still so in love with Jesus. And, and I was reading the Bible and, you know, you wake up in the morning and you like, and you open your Bible and you're like, you know, you've done it. And it was like, okay, Lord, you're going to speak to me. And like, wherever my fingers like, ah, ah, that's why you're talking to me. Like, it was like, oh, for me, voila, it's like for me, right? You go to service and it's like, who told, I told my husband, are you talking to the pastors about me? Because that's all he talks about. So you feel that everything is for you. And you love the worship and you love everything, right? You're like, in every song, you're so in, in it. And then, little by little, without you knowing, little by little, life creeps in. Distractions creeps in. Then you start having problems. And then all of a sudden, you're like, hey, wait a minute. I thought I was exempted from problems and trials. Where did you read that? It's because you're not reading your Bible, right? So, so all of a sudden, you find yourself like, wait a minute. I don't even like this song. Why are they singing this? This is not my favorite song. It's not for you. We came to worship Jesus, not yourself, right? But we, we, we tend to be that way. You know, and then I would skip, like, yeah, we, I come on a third song. I don't like those songs. And then all of a sudden, it's like, you know what? It, it, the message only hits me once, once, maybe once a month. The rest of them, it's like, I'm, I already arrived. <laughs> no, that's the moment, my friend, without you knowing that you really have climbed down to the valley. And you go to the valley because God loves you so much because it's in the valley where you grow. So Psalms 23 verse 1 says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. See, this is the way we're going to read the entire Psalms, but this is, and we can keep it there, guys. This is the way that God sees our lives and that how God wants us to live our lives. That I can say, God is my pastor because that's a shepherd, right? And I lack nothing. And if I tell you this morning, God is your shepherd and you lack nothing. You shall not want. And you're like, you don't understand. You don't know my needs. No, I know your needs. I understand your needs. But I'm talking about what God is saying about you and I. So you have to remind yourself. You have to remind yourself and you said, you have to, if you want to win your battles with the devil, because we do have an enemy. I wish I was an MMA fighter. Is that what it's called? Yes, because you were one, huh? <laughs> and just to knock them out. Like just with one, you stand the moment that you start your problem. But that's something that we need to exercise. And you need to say, you know what? In this situation, 
in my trial right now, I shall not want. I have no lack. But you just lost your job. He is my shepherd, and I will not lack. Do you need to go get a J-O-B? Yes. That doesn't mean you sit down and just pray to heaven that a, a, a job will fall on your, on, your, on your lap. No. It means because you have faith, you're going to go out and look every day knowing that you're a prisoner of hope. And every day you're going to hope for the best outcome of that day. So it's like, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. I lack nothing. And you know, yesterday I was meditating and I was, I, that's actually one of my first scriptures that I learned. I learned the entire Psalms, you know. It took me, I'm not going to tell you how long it took me, but I learned it. And so all of a sudden, as, as I was meditating yesterday and, um, and walking and praying, um, I started to say that. And all of a sudden, I felt like this great fear, like, like a tangible fear. And then the Lord says, this is where you stand and you remind yourself that I am your shepherd and there's nothing that you lack in me. That no matter what you're going through, will go through, are going through, that he is your answer and that we're well equipped inside. But then you need to have great persistence. You need to, you need to be resilient. You need to be unshakable. Because the enemy doesn't want you to see him as a good shepherd. Because he's going to want you to fixate yourself or fix your eyes on everything that you lack and you don't have. And he says, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leaves me beside the still waters. You know, I was talking last Wednesday and other Wednesdays, uh, two Wednesdays ago, I was talking about the storms of life, of life, right? So in this life, you're going to experience everything. There's going to be big storms, some storms, little storms, little drizzles. But in everything, we need to be reminded that instead of us saying like, oh, my gosh, I'm in another storm and I'm, you're freaking out. Not a freak on, but a freak out, you know? You, it passed you by, huh? <laughs> you guys are holy. So it says, in those times, the Lord says, that's when you remind yourself Stop thinking about the storm, Virginia. You have to think and see yourself that I am leading you beside the still waters, even in the midst of your storm. And see, that's a, that, that takes a different faith. Because you're like, oh, no, 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 I can feel the storm. I, you know what? I'm, I'm protected right now. I feel, and you can go through all of your emotions, but he wants you to... Not deny it, but come back to what he says. No, you lead me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leaves me in the path of righteousness for whose sake? Can you imagine he wants to restore our soul? And we think we're sometimes I'm crying out to God, God, heal me, restore me. He's like, and I'm thinking that I'm asking him for a favor. He's saying like, I'm doing it not just because I want to do it. It's because I'm doing it for my name, his namesake. So that shows you how much he wants to restore us, how much, he, how much he wants to redeem us. But one of the things that I've come to learn uh, through my restoration, through, you know, we're going to be restored until we get to heaven, right? We're going to arrive until we get to heaven. But what I realized is that our restoration, sometimes we don't even know when God is restoring us because he's doing it little by little. He's sending you all these people like, all of a sudden, one person will come, and all of a sudden, someone will tell you, you know, God sent me, and God said, I'm praying for you. I'm with you. And you're like, I want an angel to come, you know what I mean? <laughs> you start thinking, like, it should be God telling me this. And then God sends you another person to encourage you and to tell you you're going to make it. And, and then so he's putting all these little crumbs. It's, it's, his, it's his bread of life, right? So we are, we are the body of Christ. So he's sending you. And this is what I picture. I picture everything. I'm, it's like you, you're seeking for me and yet you're, I'm sending all these people around you. But you can't even see that I'm restoring your soul. Yeah, it's painful, but I'm restoring your soul and I'm leading you into the path of righteousness. So recognize my presence. 
We need to recognize his presence even when we do not feel him. And good things because we don't walk by feelings, right? He didn't say, he didn't, he didn't call us walk by your feelings and not by faith. No, he says walk by faith, not by sight. And faith is calling those things that are not as though they are. And then I love this part. Well, I, know I don't love it, but I want to tell you. Ye though, see, God is like the answer. Ye though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Every time I read that, I want to do like this. <laughs> of the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. You rod and your staff, they come for me. It says, even though you walk through the valley of the what? It didn't say even though you walk through the valley of death. It said you walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And isn't it something that we go into a panic mode when we're in our darkest moments? But what causes that? It's, it's a shadow. He, the enemy is the one who puts the shadow. He wants to confuse us. He wants to tell you that, you know what, God is not talking to you anymore. Remember when he, you, you and I used to talk a lot and you guys had this amazing relationship? Remember when you went to the parking, you, went, you were, we were going shopping to the mall, and you prayed for your parking spot? And remember he had it reserved already for you? And remember how you were praying for the dress because it was too costly and your husband was going to say no or you didn't have it. So you were praying for a sale and then you went to the mall and then not only did you get your parking spot, but you got your dress and it was on sale. Yes, I remember that. And I don't know what guys do. I don't know if you guys pray for parking spots or I don't know if you guys go to the mall for knives or guns. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why, what's your deal. But you have, I'm sure you believe for something like we women believe, right? We, we believe for a pair of shoes. If you, want me, if you want to give me a pair of shoes, I'm more than welcome. I'll receive them. <laughs> but those are those little things. Those little things that we go back and we remember those things. And now we can't hear God. And, and then we crave because we were, we were born for relationship. So we crave to hear him. And I, I believe that many times we negate his voice because we want him to talk. We don't want people to tell us. And people could come and give you words of knowledge. People could come and give you a prophetic word. What's, what's a prophetic word? Is that God is, is giving someone a word about your life that it's yet to come, but it's a good word. It's always a good word. And you're like, no, I want God to talk to me. And then you go back home and then you're crying, why are you not talking to me? And then you have all this text and all these people telling you how much God loves you. Nope, he's not talking to me. He has a body. It's called the body of Christ. And that's what we need each other. Psalms 91 uh, one says, and if we can put it, he who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the what? You see, the enemy, we have two choices. When you, meet, you either believe that you're under the shadow of the valley of death or you believe that you're under the shadow of the Almighty. And he says, he who dwells in the secret place. Dwells means to live. This is where I am to live. So there's times because I live under his dwelling place. I live under the shadow of the Almighty. And I abide under his wings. And he protects me and he shadows me. So think about a, about a bird and a bird mama. And then they have a baby. And then the baby can't even see. It's dark inside because mama is protecting the baby. And we confuse many times the shadow with the shadow of the enemy because but that's what he wants. And he's going to tell you, no, you're, you're in the shadow of the valley of death. Look, look, you feel like you're dying. Look at your family. You should be whatever. Look at your marriage. Look, look at your finances. Look at your business. Look at that. He wants us to be confused with the valley of the shadow of death. And then that's when you and I need to make a decision and you say, you know what? No. Stop it, wait a minute. I'm abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. 
I'm that close that sometimes that's why I can't see him because I am under him. I live, I dwell, and I am under him. And that's why he tells you, that's why you don't fear no evil. Because I am with you. I'm actually the one protecting you. The next one. Okay. Where were we? Thank you for following me. You prepare. Oh, yeah, there we go. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. So we have two tables. When you, when we read the Bible, the people that put it together, they're the ones that put it in chapters and in verses. But Psalms 23 wasn't written in uh, verse 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. No. It's a whole song of David. Because David understood what it was to encounter one trial after another, after another, after another. David, if you think about King David, King David was a child who was rejected since birth. That even when God said, I'm going to anoint a new king in Israel, they even, they didn't even think of him. How would you feel? They made fun of him. They didn't even count him as a person. But one thing that he had, and I love it because he was very, very connected, not only with his emotions, but he was very connected with God. So he says since the beginning, he says, I have a shepherd and I lack nothing. He is the one who makes me lay down in green pastures. He is the one who leaves me beside the still waters. And he, and he believed it. And if you read his life, it was one trial after another. I mean, for, I don't know, for four, I don't mean many years. I think it was 40 years or less than that. Don't quote me on that. The king Saul tried to kill him every single day, and yet he was able to declare that of God. But he says that he prepares a table before the enemies, and he, because he means that it means a feast, it means to eat. And we read in the Bible that the, in the word it says, Taste and see that the Lord is good. How many times the moment you, you got into a trial, maybe you were diagnosed with cancer, maybe you lost your home, maybe you lost your business, maybe you lost your marriage or your children and, or something horrible, something that's out of your own control. I'm talking when the only thing that you have is Jesus and we call it the only thing. It's not even a thing. The only person, he's only the person. He is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. But it's hard to comprehend and, and get it unless we exercise it. So he says, taste and see that the Lord is good. What happens is that when we are in the valley of the shadow of the death, we want to see first. Right? You don't want to taste first. I want to see, then I taste. Like even uh, I was watching a video. I'm going on a tangent right now. I was watching a video, it was really funny about, you know, they do it, a uh, revealing of whatever gender, and then they have the daddy, and he's bl blindfolded, and he's tasting all this, you know, all this, you know, baby food, right? And this is the dad, and he's refusing to taste the baby food, because he wants to see it first. But that's the way we, we do in life. That's the way we want to trust God, you know, let me see, let me see, and then I'll taste it. Because you feel like I'm being blindfolded, I'm blindsided. You want to blindside me? I'm not going to taste that. If I don't see it, I'm not going to taste it. But that's not faith. Faith is tasting first and then seeing it. And when we live like that, then we can't get up. When we live like that, I believe that we can overcome. When we live like that, I believe that we can change and transform people's lives. And not only their lives, but our lives. But I know that in my times of darkness, I'm not going to lie to you. I wasn't sitting on this table. I wasn't rolling around on the green pastures. I felt like I was tantruming on dirt. And I didn't feel that he was protecting me. Because the enemy and the voice of the enemy was louder. And I tell you why. Because I decided not to 
allowed him to make me a table because he says that he will make, he will prepare your table. But because of fear, I decided I'm going to, I'm going to protect myself. I'm going to make my own table. I'm making my own table with my cup of noodles. Because this is safe. This is what I can see. I know cup of noodles. By the way, if you eat cup of noodles, they take three days to digest. <laughs> Just a fun fact for those who love cup of noodles. And but I have spent many seasons in my life not on that table. Not on the one that he prepared for me. Because I wanted a mountaintop experience. Because I was afraid of the valley. Of the valley of the shadow of death. The shadow that but your life is over. You shouted that you're never going to make it. Your business is never going to make it. You're never going to get ahead. Who are you kidding? God is not even listening to you. And then all of a sudden, what you're doing, I hope you guys cook this. Because it's going to take me three days, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm eating on my own problems. I'm not eating and I'm tasting because this is, I can see. I can see this. I can see this. I, it's, this, is, this is comforting. I don't like it, but it's comforting, so I'd rather eat it. And God is asking you, son, daughter, but I have prepared a table before you. I have prepared a feast for you. But I want you to trust me. And to be able to choose that table and this table, it takes bold faith. I mean, bold faith. You know what bold faith is? Bold faith is founded in a silent trust. Silent. Silent because you're not going to hear the voice, his voice, how you want him to hear his voice. Not all the time. He's speaking, but, but maybe not the way that you were used to hearing his voice. And I had to, like, stop myself, remind myself. You are my shepherd. This is my first scripture that I learned. You are my shepherd. And I shall not want. I shall not lack. And you do make me lay down in green pastures. And you do lead me beside still waters. That's who you are. And you do prepare a table for me just so my enemies can see and I had to choose to dine with them how do you dine with them you need the word of God you need to know who God is you need to you need to you need to many times I have forgotten who am I you even you even lost yourself we even have a song that you lost yourself it and he found you where he where you lost yourself. And there will be times that you might feel like you lost yourself. But you know, it's good. That's okay. Because he will find you. I tell you why. Because it says there. That he anoints my head with oil. And my cup runs over. I have enough not only for me. But for anyone who comes. And, and, and gets to meet Jesus in me. And he says that he anoints my head with oil because he's talking about a shepherd and a sheep, right? 
And in those times, they had to anoint, they had to oil the sheep because there was these bugs that would come into their eyes, into their ears. And if they got into the ears, it will, it, they will have this, well, these uh, disgusting bugs. I don't know what they are. And they go in, they will go into their brain and kill the sheep. That's why he says, you know what? You, you think you're losing your mind? Go back there. I, I already anointed your head with oil. No, no, no. I anointed your head with my oil. What? The oil of gladness. What's the anointing? It's the presence of the Holy Spirit. And he says, surely goodness and mercy should follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So maybe right now you feel like anything, anything that's following you is just bad luck. Well, that's, that's that table. Maybe right now you feel, you know what, I was just wrong in the wrong country. That's that table. Maybe I was born in, you know, if I wasn't Hispanic, I would have more opportunity. That's that table. Maybe if somebody would have walked me through earlier and I would have learned more about Jesus, that's that table. Because in this table, it says that you forever are going to be chased by goodness and mercy for the rest of your life on this earth. So when you feel like you lost it or you have made too many mistakes and you're have so many regrets, you remind yourself, no, I'm going to go back to what my shepherd said. And he says that his goodness and his mercy, his mercy, do you understand? His mercy means that we don't deserve it and he gives it to us. It's going to chase me. It's going to follow me all the days of my life. When you feel, no, I can never start all over again. You don't, you don't understand where I've been, what I've done, what I've said, what I thought. You go back to there. And you said, no, no, no. Mercy is actually chasing me. I just need to allow it to catch me. Let him catch you. Let his mercy and his goodness catch you. I can honestly say that I'm alive today preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I can still tell you, tell you through the hell and back that I have lived, that my God is a good God. That my God is a good shepherd. And I have dwelt a lot on that little table. But you know what? The moment that you say, Lord, forgive me, I repent for, for not seeing but I understand that you never left me, that you've always been with me. And I am bound to be your prisoner of hope. I always have hope according to your word. Not how you feel, but according to your word, yes. I don't lack anything. Everything that I need, I have it. You already made a preparation for me. In your goodness, in your mercy... Every day that I wake up, they're chasing me. You're not even chasing them. So I want to pray for you. I want you to bow your uh, head and close your eyes. And I want to pray for you. And I believe that God will speak to you today, to some of you or to most of you. And I believe that a lot of you have been, been uh, living in fear. I think a lot of you have your, made your own table. And I don't know how your table looks like. And you have just been meditating and chewing on the things that have taken place in your life. And the lack that you've had. And how people just left you down and. Maybe you've been hurt in church. I don't know. Maybe people have betrayed you. People have disappointed you. People have offended you. And, and if that took place, please forgive them. Because your heavenly father is a good shepherd. He is your good pastor. And he loves you. And he wants to 
renew your strength today. And he wants to tell you that his plan and his purpose for your life has not changed. He never changes. We are to be changed. We are to be transformed. But he never changes. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And whatever promise he gave you, I don't know, 20 years ago, 10 years ago, 6 months ago, his promises for your life, they still stand and they're solid. So if that's you, I say, you know what, that's for me. I, 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 I've been, I, lost my, I lost my way. I've been desiring just to hear his voice and he's been speaking. What happens is that he did spoke to, speak to you before, before your little valley experience came down. It's just that we forgot. Before my valley experience, he said to me, Virginia, trust me. That's all he needed to say. But I wanted more details. So if he has nothing else to tell you because there is nothing new, you're still in the same project, right? So the words still stand. Trust them. Have bold faith. Be resilient. So if that's you in this message, touch your life. I want you to raise your hand and I'm going to pray for you. I see those hands. Thank you so much. Well, Heavenly Father, I just thank you for every person here this morning. And I thank you that your word will bear much fruit in their hearts. I thank you that today they find themselves in hope. They find themselves knowing that they're being chased by your goodness and your mercy. And that you have prepared a table for them so the enemies can see that you are a God who never leaves us. That you have us always. And Father, we said that we will not fear because we know we are, we are covered under your shadow the shadow of the Almighty. We're not going to be under the shadow of fear of the shadow of the enemy, but it's going to be under the shadow of the Almighty. So we receive your word today. In Jesus. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.